Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, put your hands together for the one, the only, Matata! Hello everyone, Matata nice, and welcome back to Half-Life. Now this is day 9 of our, of our uh, SS, SSM, no, SSVGM. Yeah, as a, or for short, a school summer vacation, school summer vacation gaming marathon. Okay. Now I... Good thing I actually went to check because I wanted to know if there was something that was missing here, if there was anything else I need to do. But I've learned that and actually need that I actually need to kill the um the, the you know the big thing, the big boy. The other big boy that's gonna he this be here. You know the so the sort of armor up thing? Bruh. No, it's this one I need to take. This one. And I need to kill it. I mean, this thing I still have to, but... Actually, I don't need to do damage, I just need to wait. Pretty much. I've learned that I actually went... I really wanted to check because I'm like, okay. I feel like there's something else here. There's, there's gotta be something else here than just... Shooting him at the, for nothing. Okay, you can actually just wait here behind until he shoots a teleporter. He still gets me. I just need to wait. Whoa, he's huge head. Look at his huge head. I actually need to kill that thing. I learned that. So I'm moving around. Not that. This. There we go. Now we're actually done with this place. So we won't need to be here anymore. I think. I'm pretty sure of it. Okay. But now let's, uh, let's... Let's go, huh? Now let's finally kill that thing off once and for good. Once and for all. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. I want to switch gun. Yeah. Bit too close for comfort. Thank you. Now do I need now do I just need to keep shooting at him? I'll I'll try. Him. I do see some damage spill. I do see like uh, some blood spill when I hit him. Ow. So I am hitting him. I am hitting him. I feel like I need to break those things too. I do! I forgot! <laughs> it's not the way to be far, actually. Reload your damn gun. Yeah. Now I can 
Andy, kill him. Pretty sure of it. Did I say it earlier? Welcome back to half life eh. Oh, really? You got me by the corner? <laughs> Fuck you. You dick, man. <laughs> we. Start destroying these things again. I mean, like I had a feeling that they would that I would need to, to destroy these things, but since there were like many platforming sections and there was one last, I wasn't sure if I actually needed to or not. I gotta wait while waiting. Gonna reload. If you reload, it takes longer. Oh god! Wow. Oh, it's too far! Okay, never mind. Oh, come on, really? Really? Fuck you! I hate you! Oh, I, oh, I forgot I had this as well. Ah! That's a, trouble, that's a problem I have with these types of games. I have trouble switching between multiple weapons. Now using this was better. I feel like he's frozen. Eh, he's gonna die. Might as well kill everything else during. But, oh my god, he's so creepy. Just look at him. Not that one. This. Okay. You really need to stay perfectly on it. That it literally turns around. Can that thing just die fucking quicker? Why is it so hard to kill anything in this? Seriously, that's something I noticed as well. It's so hard to kill literally anything in this game. You're not the one I'm aiming at. Find it. to save so now I don't, don't have to do that thing again
I swing some, but it'll be frequently. I'm so scared to move. Huh? No, do I do I need to get on top of him? Oh no, never mind then. Whoa. Oh boy, something else is gonna be bad. This is gonna be bad. Oh god, what the fuck? What in God's name? But Gordon Freeman in the flesh, or rather in the hazard suit, I took the liberty of relieving you of your weapons. Most of them were government property. As for the suit, I think you've earned it. Thank you? The border world, Zen, is in our control for the time being, thanks to you. Quite a nasty piece of work you managed over there. I am impressed. Well, thank you. I guess. That's why I'm here, Mr. Freeman. I have recommended your services to my employers. And they have authorized me to offer you a job. They agree with me that you have limitless potential. Okay. What the fuck? You've proved yourself a decisive man, so I don't expect you'll have any trouble deciding what to do. If you're interested, just step into the portal and I will take that as a yes. Otherwise, well, I can offer you a battle you have no chance of winning. Rather an anti-climax after what you've just survived. To choose. Um, yeah. Wisely done, Mr. Freeman. I will see you up ahead. Subject Freeman status hired, awaiting an assignment. What the fuck just happened? What is the story of this game? What is this game? What the fuck? What the fuck? Seriously, like, what is this game? Like, the story is really something. Like, I mean, I mean. I think there's a story here, but I think it's not, it's really, it's really vague, it's a really vague, really, really vague story. But... But I think that... Hmm... Who hired him? Who hired the G-Man? Like, okay, so now I understand why we were seeing him everywhere. He was like, he was watching me. He was watching what I was doing. But who is... Who are his employers? First of all. And second of all... Um... Who, like, really, who are they? Who is they? And then, yes, the other thing, like the, like the boss, the Neonet, I think, he said that he was the last, so, I think he was extinct? He was, I mean, his whole species was extinct, from what I'm understanding here. Not only that, but, by destroying him, it destroyed the link between Zen, Zen and Earth. 
destroyed the link between the two. So he was the one keeping it. But then again, wait. If I if I if I if I think about this properly, if if we're the ones who create a dimensional rift by uh, because of the resonance cascade that happened, uh, you know, at the start of the game, if we're the ones, it actually wasn't his fault. It actually wasn't his fault. Well, it was actually you know of our own doing because we we did this we we made it uh, because of because of something that happened we opened the world we opened a link between the world and the netherlands was the one who was keeping it and as we see yes zen is pretty barren it's, it's pretty it's really a barren land so maybe he was trying actually he he didn't want maybe he actually didn't want to kill everyone he just like wanted Maybe he just actually well maybe he did maybe he actually just wanted to to um, have a place to actually live in properly because you know he's all alone he has nothing his whole his even his whole home world is pretty barren not gonna lie it's really it's pretty empty so maybe he wanted another place to be able to, to live in so wow okay. Okay, that's um, this is something I did not expect. Um, okay, I I want to check out something. Can I check out something? Can you do anything here? I can just jump here, so I actually have to end. Okay, I want to go and check something, okay? I'll be right back. Okay, so I, I found this video like from someone that I've been watching for a long time, actually. And um, it's called, uh, like, Nathanleth Interpretations, based on some, I think it's, like, lines of what he said. Yeah, yeah, this is. It's lines of what, he's, of what the Nathanleth said, interpreted into... Um, um, and the guy that I'm watching, Big Mac Davis, actually interprets those lines by what he said. So let's see. Hello everybody, I'm Big Mac Davis here, and as you probably already guessed, yes, this is kind of a special video. But this video will be included at the end of the playlist of my Half-Life walkthrough. Yeah, it is. So think of this video as kind of like a discussion to help people better understand the complexity of the Half-Life storyline. Kind of like a bit of bonus material, so to speak. And today, we are going to be discussing Nihilanth, the okay. end boss of Half-Life 1, and we will be trying to interpret his mysterious phrases. The phrases that he telepathically puts into Gordon's mind as Gordon makes his trek throughout the Zen chapters. But before we get started, however, please note that in this video, a lot of these interpretations are opinionated. They're just my opinions, meaning they are not confirmed to be true in any way, shape, or form. And also, before we get started, please note that I won't reveal everything in these interpretations. So don't... So please don't say things like, Oh, dude, you suck. Haven't you ever played Half-Life 2? This is revealed right here in Half-Life 2, you noob. Okay, so yeah. Okay, so that's important. Yes, that, that, that is important, actually. I will... So since I haven't played it, and that's pretty cool actually that he he says that he won't mention he won't mention the stuff that actually is answered through Half Life Two and etc etc. Or, um, but that that's actually really nice. I re I really have to say that's really nice. He said he he won't reveal everything. Well, please please understand. Ah, uh, damn it! Okay. Okay. Now let's see. We haven't gotten to the Half-Life 2 walkthrough yet, so all these interpretations 
will be based on Half-Life 1 observations. That's good. When we get to the Half-Life 2 walkthrough, then yes, I will reveal more. It's an, like, as information becomes available sort of deal here. Anyway, enough talking about this. Let's just get to the interpretations. Okay. Um, the lover. This is said when Gordon enters Chapter 15, Zen. Yeah. I think the end boss is just stating a fact here. Gordon is not the first scientist to ever visit Zen. And throughout the Zen levels, there are many dead bodies that Gordon comes across, all of them wearing HEV armor from back in Black Mesa, and this just proves that Gordon is not the first. Win, you cannot win. This is said when Gordon enters Chapter 16, oh. Gonark's Lair. Didn't know, didn't I think the end boss figures that Gonark, the queen of the head crabs, will just okay. easily beat Gordon. Because Gordon is just a human, and Gonark is this giant, oversized head crab that can easily stomp Gordon out. Yeah, that's true. But in the end, like Gordon always does, he triumphs over Gonark and defeats the queen. Run, what the hell? This is said when Gordon enters Chapter 17, okay. Interloper. So Gordon has just defeated the Queen of the Head Crabs, Gonark, and then the end boss says this. Now obviously, the end boss is upset that Gordon has beaten her. But why? She's just an oversized head crab, right? Nobody cares about head crabs. Well, think about it. Head crabs attacked the scientists in Black Mesa, mm -hmm. and they transformed the scientists into zombies. These zombies would then attack other scientists and security guards, thus adding to the enemy number, and thus making the enemy stronger. Mm -hmm. So with the death of Gonark, head crabs stopped being produced. Oh. This is bad news for the end boss. That's smart. This is said when Gordon enters the second part of Chapter 17, Interloper. Oh yeah, I also want to mention, I think there were some lines that were actually said in reverse, because I couldn't recognize any single word that was said throughout, so I think there were some, there were some that actually were said in reverse. But this wasn't said in the walkthrough, and I don't know why. Now, there are a few theories out there as to what this phrase means. But I think the end boss is talking about the G-Man here. Well, duh. If I'm right, and he is talking about the G-Man, then this is a very revealing piece of news. The end boss basically is saying that the G-Man is not a man. If he's not a man, then what is he? An alien? If the G-Man is an alien, is he friends with Earth? Or is he an enemy to Earth? The end boss also says that the G-Man is waiting for Gordon. Well, he was. And this, this is true. Since after Gordon kills the end boss, the G-Man immediately shows up and starts talking to Gordon about a job offer. Die, you all die, you all die. Now this is said when Gordon is in the middle of the second part of Chapter 17, Interloper. Okay. And the end boss may be talking about the human race here. He wishes that the human race would all just die. After all, he's the one who's sending his alien warriors through the portal that he is holding open. So perhaps he wants all of Earth to die. This is said when Gordon enters the third part of Chapter 17, Interloper. And this is said when, um... Remember that room with all those Vortigaunts that didn't fire at Gordon? 
yeah, that's when this is said. And, um, the end boss could be saying this for a variety of reasons, though I, for one, can't think of a good reason why. Mm. I guess the only thing I can think of is that the Vortigaunts in that room, they go about their business with utter concentration, and they don't really look at Gordon all that much, like they're ignoring him or pretending that he doesn't exist. So maybe, maybe, the end boss is trying to discourage Gordon, trying to make him think that he's all by himself or something. Uh, who knows? I don't know. Hmm. Blast. I am blast. I really wonder what's gonna say about that one though. Not gonna lie. Pretty excited to see what he's gonna say about that. So yeah, I've just decided to do this instead during uh, during these. This is said when Gordon enters the final part of Chapter 17, Interloper. And this saying could have a variety of different meanings behind it, and I'll go ahead and give you two of the more accepted meanings in the Half-Life fandom. First of all, this is said just before Gordon goes into that red portal, which will take him to the end boss's chamber. So he could be saying this as if to say he's the last enemy that Gordon will face in this game. Or he be could too many. also be saying this because he's trying to tell Gordon that he's the last of his species on Zen. I honestly prefer that one. I think that that one made more sense. The other one is more meta. It's like, it's, oh, I'm the last enemy. That's too meta for my taste. He may be the last Nihilanth, so to speak. And if Gordon kills him, there'll be no more of his kind ever again. That's not creepy. This is said, of course, when Gordon enters Chapter 18, the Helanth. Ah. And this is said when Gordon is staring face to face with the end boss. Now this phrase, at first glance, may appear to have no meaning at all. It's just a name, right? Well, think about it carefully. How could a being who lives dozens, if not hundreds of light years away from Earth, have any idea as to what Gordon's last name is? Well, the answer to this question is rather simple. The end boss is omniscient and telepathic, yeah. and is able to read people's minds and find out their names. After all, he's able to talk to Gordon throughout the Zen chapters by speaking directly into his mind. Now this okay. is said when Gordon gets teleported to the second chamber by the end boss. Oh. That room where you have to ride those balls up to the portal at the ceiling. Yeah. yeah those balls. And this balls. phrase here is short, sweet, and to the point. The player, which in the same sense is Gordon Freeman, will never know everything there is to know about the Half-Life events and the Half-Life storyline. They'll never know everything about the G-Man, and they'll never know everything about the end boss. It's just that simple. Yeah. Kind of figures. Now this is said when Gordon gets teleported to the third chamber by the end boss, that large room with the ichthyosaur in the water. Now there are a few theories out there as to what this phrase means, and the most accepted theory, and the theory I believe in too, is the end boss is referring to the G-Man in this phrase. Now at this point in Half-Life, after just playing through Half-Life 1, we don't know a lot of information about the G-Man. Yeah. And I can't reveal all that information in this video because we haven't gotten to the later Half-Life games yet. Okay. But what I can say is this. Think back to the G-Man's job offer. Oh. Remember how you only had those two choices to choose from? 
either you accept his job offer and you walk into the green portal or if you refuse the job offer you get sent to that large room of alien grunts and face your own death uh. the G-man at this point in Half-Life whether you want to agree with it or not he is being manipulative here yeah it's either his way or death the job offer or death and who knows that choice of you walking into the portal the G-man might be deceiving us here we'll just have to find out Now this is said when Gordon gets teleported to the third chamber for the second time by the end boss, that large room that now has a gargantua in it. And this phrase is easy. Obviously the end boss wants Gordon to die right now. And that right now could come from this gargantua. But you know, of course, being the badass that Gordon is and all, he defeats the gargantua. I mean, Gordon, I mean, of course, Gordon could be a badass, but considering how many times I died, I don't think I could consider being a badass. They're slaves. We uh, are. They're slaves. We are. Now, this phrase, just look at it. It's mysterious. This is a very rare phrase, and I've only heard it like three or four times total out of the many times I've played this game. Now this can be said anywhere throughout the Zen chapters, and if it is said, it will just replace the phrase that the end boss would have said normally. And this phrase, well, I can see why it's so rare. It's very revealing and very mysterious. We are their slaves. The end boss is saying we, like he includes himself in all of this. We are their slaves. So then, according to him, the end boss and all his Zen alien folk are slaves to another alien race. So with this knowledge in hand, Maybe the end boss isn't the mastermind behind all of this chaos. Maybe it's these alien masters forcing the end boss and all the Zen aliens to attack. Hmm. Maybe a future Half-Life game will answer this question as to who this alien race might be. Hmm. This is yet another rare phrase, and again, I've only heard it like three or four times total out of the many times I've played this game. And just like the previous phrase, it can be said anywhere throughout the Zen chapters. I think the end boss may be talking about Black Mesa here. Black Mesa, the Black Mesa Research Facility and... Yes! Just when you said that, just when you said that, I immediately thought, I, I immediately thought, oh, that would make so much sense. They can, maybe, maybe they're talking about the Black Mesa, about Black Mesa. That would be, oh, that would be so perfect. That would be so perfect because, because it, it would actually be true. Because just, just look at Portal 2. Just look at Portal 2 and, and what, and what, uh, Cave Johnson says. Uh, they can, uh, for, uh, when they, when he says that, uh, uh, wait, I think he says something like, um, maybe you bought it from us, or either from, or either from another company who stole it from us. Black Mesa. Those guys can kiss my... <laughs> you know, that would make so much sense. That would make so much sense. And all the scientists created these portals in Black Mesa, and they found Zen through these portals. Then they sent some scientists into the Zen world and they brought back some crystals from Zen. Or in this case, they stole some crystals from Zen. 
Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. If I actually look at the crystal, that's that's right. You know, the, that's right, right in the corner, right in the corner. Uh, that would make so much sense. That makes so much sense because it, it actually looks, it actually looks like one of the crystal, uh, the crystal that you know that we push at the start of the game to uh, to make it. You know. Zen. And remember, in anomalous materials, the second chapter of Half Life. Gordon's job was to push a yellow crystal exactly. into the beam of energy so the scientists could study this crystal. That crystal, that yellow crystal that Gordon pushed in the beam, that came from Zen. And it caused a resonance cascade. And a resonance cascade, it opened up a main portal between Zen and Earth, allowing these aliens to invade. At this point in Half-Life, we don't know what caused this resonance cascade, whether it was the crystal itself or some other force that did it. We don't know yet, but perhaps later we will find out. Eventually, we'll find out all these mysteries and hopefully the questions will be solved. And that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed, and the goal of this video was not to answer a lot of questions. It was to raise many more questions, because, yeah, there's a lot of questions unanswered. And more questions have been asked because of these interpretations, haven't they? Oh boy, the mysteries of Half-Life. Well, maybe they'll be answered later on in more Half-Life games. We'll just have to find out. And that's why I'm itching for Half-Life 3, everybody. Because <laughs> still, some of these questions have not been answered. What? So yeah. Anyways, hope what? you guys enjoyed, and I will see you in the next walkthrough. Take care, everybody. I'm sorry? I'm sorry. Some of this has uh, some of these questions actually haven't been answered yet. Excuse you. Excuse you. Yeah, no, I was just gonna put it here. So okay, apparently there are still some questions that still haven't been answered. It's either a because some uh, some of it was dropped, or b is because well, well I mean this video dates from 2013, so Half-Life Alex didn't it wasn't out yet. Hmm. Hmm. Well, that's that's the only Half Life I won't be able to play though, because I don't have a VR headset. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I actually I know this video was kind of this video. I mean, the video that you're watching right now, not the video that I'm watching to the video that you're watching. Man, that's man, that's is this Inception level? But anyway, um, this was actually I. This actually helped me a little bit because because this helped me a little bit have a, at least a little bit of a story because otherwise I would have no idea what the hell was happening. Okay, so so to so recap, Black Mesa stole a crystal, the crystal that's actually right now you can actually see in the screen right now, and and that was used to open the portal. That was used to open the portal between Zen and Earth. When we killed the Nihil Nihilith, yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna call it like that, Nihilith, Nihilith, or Nihilith. Anyway, this thing, the that thing, the big-headed dude. Um, so that thing apparently, it will was what was holding uh, as well the, the the link between the two g-man was waiting apparently he apparently he's not man g-man is not a man apparently and um there's still a lot left there are still many questions left but okay now now that actually we're done with this with this game as well and sorry that i really liked this video as well um i mean the video that i ended up recording because i'm i didn't know i could actually record the browser i mean i knew i could but i never tried it before so this was just a 
okay, let's go and try it. A uh, hell of a thing. But it worked. It worked, and I'm happy about it. <laughs> I'm happy that it worked. So that means I can do actually some of the stuff that I, that I wanted to do. To actually, uh, because I I had some plans for videos to watch. I bought some of them, uh, but don't worry. It's not like it's not going to be uh, you know like your less players are playing. No, 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 no. It's going to be way better than that. Oh yeah, it's going to be way better than that. But the thing is that I don't know when I'm going to do it. But anyway. So I think the I think the the guy Big Bang, Big Bang Davis actually did like a sort of a discussion video for each half life game that he played. I think he did one for Opposing Force and for Blue Shift, which uh, which are like uh, other separate games, but I, but that go with Half Life. I think from what I understand, Opposing Force is uh, where you're playing from the government side of things, and. And Blue Shift, you're playing as one of the security guards. You know the, you know the, the those that have the blue, blue uniforms, which is why like Blue Shift. And I think those would be better to play before uh, before playing Half Life 2. Now, now I uh, am in a, in a bit of a dilemma. Now, I don't know which game I, will, I would have to play next because this thing, like that's the thing. As much as there's so many elements of, of the game that bugged me, that just annoyed the living shit out of me, the story is very intriguing, even though even though it's not even completed yet. I still, I just, I can't decide if I would want actually to keep playing, like to keep playing Half Life, because you know. Because as as much as the story is vague, I would really need to stay in it, to stay in in the story, in the style of the story, to not get lost, to not get lost uh, through it. Well, so by just keeping keep playing them, it would help me uh, set myself set myself straight in, in, into the story. But from what I heard, the other ones are better. I think I think Half Life Two is better. I think. A lot of people said that Half-Life 2 is better because you know Half-Life 1 was there. You know, it was it was Valve's baby. You know, it was their first game. I think I think it was one of their first games. If not, if it wasn't their first game, it was one of their first. That's for damn sure. But yeah, this video was uh, was actually a little bit longer and a kind of a special one too. But but now I'm actually going to end the episode here, and we'll see what's going gonna to be the next thing I'm going to do uh, on this channel. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day. Don't forget to subscribe and click the link the link right next to it, as usual. And with that, let the curtain fall. Goodbye, everybody.